Hi, my name's Johnny and today I really need a haircut. And today we are having a look at the BB434 from Yamaha. So I'm going to start each video off now, I think, with uh, an idea of the day, uh, and that is to like this video. Yamaha just amazed me. You want a bike? Get a Yamaha. You want a fridge? Get a Yamaha. You want a toilet? Get a Yamaha. You want a base? Get a Yamaha. How come one company do so many products and do it right in so many ways? BB or Broad Base series is a long existing series going way back. Now this is Yamaha's alternative to a P-Base normally having a PJ configuration in this body shape that's a bit fatter and just a bit chunkier than your standard P-Base. The 434 in particular, at the time of recording you can get it around 500 to 550 pounds. And this is their kind of mid to lower range base in the BB range. Below that we've got the 234 and I think there's a 334. The number at the end obviously refers to the number of strings, so you can also get this in a five string as well. Now the 434, the, f the 434 comes in this black with cream pit guard with a maple neck. For me personally, I really wanted to get this black one. I just think it looks so sleek and just so cool. And there's a bit of a story that goes with me purchasing this base. As you know, don't like to buy new bases. <laughs> I like to get some secondhand deals because um, then when I resell them on afterwards, I'm not losing that much money, or if any money at all. And so it's quite rare for me to go and buy a new base, but you guys have been asking for a BB to be on the channel. This is the kind of price range I wanted to spend on this kind of guitar. And for me, I wanted to buy a keeper. I wanted one to stay in my arsenal instead of just flogging it on. So that's how I'm kind of justifying buying this new. I would have bought it secondhand if I could. And I nearly did, because uh, GAK, or GAC, where I bought this from, had it listed on their reverb shop as a B-stock model. But it was listed for £30 more than it was new on their website. And, you know, I kept sending them what I thought were reasonable offers, and they kept getting declined with no response, even when I said, look, this must be a mistake. How can you sell a B-stock one for more expensive than it is new on their website? Um, just no response from that, and... Uh, yeah, I just got a bit fed up and uh, just ends up biting the bullet in the end. But really, really weird that they would do that. Anyway, let's get on with the review. Oh my God. Oh. As you can hear from my straining, it's quite a heavy bass. <laughs> but for this price range, let's have a look at what you can get. So starting at the top, we've got this matching black headstock, which whoo, looks really good with the maple neck, I think. Machine heads on there are absolutely brilliant. I don't have any issues whatsoever with them. I always tell you this, but this room gets quite cold, so often my bases end up being a bit sharp in the morning. No issues with this whatsoever. So a really nice detail that Yamaha do is, I don't know if this is the same with their lower models, but the logo up here, it's not just a sticker or stuck on like it could have been. It's like a little 3D logo that's, that's stuck on there, which is really subtle, but I think it's really cool. We've got a Graph Tech nut. We've got a maple fingerboard here. Fret edges are really good it gets a bit sharper when you get up here but it's absolutely perfect down here it just starts sprouting a tiny bit up here but nothing that you'd be concerned about for this price range first interesting thing about this base i mean it's all interesting but first unique thing if we turn her over look at this look at this five piece neck i believe it's a uh, maple with two mahogany bits running up the middle. I like a good bit of wood, and this is certainly that. The neck profile itself is definitely on the fatter side. Even compared to my uh, Squire Classic Vibe 60s P bass, it definitely feels a bit chunkier. For this type of bass, I really don't mind that because with P pickups and precision basses, quite like being a bit more limited. It forces you to play differently, and 
at the end of the day, that's what I want out of this kind of bass. Um, I want it to inspire me, and that's what makes a keeper for me if I really bond with it, and my creative juices are able to keep flowing when playing an instrument. So yeah, that's, that's a big tick for me. Really, really good stuff. Moving on up, we have got the truss rod adjustment at the body of the guitar, which I wish every bass had this. I always say it, it's so much easier than fiddling around at the top of the neck. You just get your Allen key in, you can, see, you can see it more clearly, you just put your Allen key in there and you've got more room between the strings to do your adjustments. As long as you're just doing little adjustments, it's just so much easier and if you can, you know, look down the neck, oh, it needs a bit of straightening, rather than having to faff about, it's a little thing, but really, really adds and it looks pretty cool as well. Over to the back again, it's even interesting from the back, this bass. We've got a six bolt construction. Now, the more screwing you do in the back of your bass, the more sustain you're gonna get as the neck is held more securely uh, into the body. Now, going through the older body here, you've got these two here that are anchoring the neck in at a 45 degree angle. I believe Yanaha say that this is just to secure that neck in place even more, really improve the way that the sound is traveling through the guitar. It's really smart and yeah, Yamaha, you can tell that they're doing some little innovative things that are actually really paying off. And now I see why all of you are asking me to check one out because they're such impressive bits of gear, I think. And this is even at the lower end of their price range, so I'd be interested to see what they're like uh, over the thousand pound mark. Well, let's flip her back around. We've just got three knobs on there and that is the a standard volume, volume tone. We've got these YGD Alnico 5 pickups. I've been on the search for my like ultimate P bass sound and I think this might be getting there. The bridge is nothing to write home about. You know the story, it's just a standard vintage style bridge. The one thing that is good about this bridge though, let's flip it around again. We've got a string through construction on the body. Normally these holes are just on the back of the guitar and they go straight through into the bridge and up the neck. Here, we've got them at the end of the bass at a 45 degree angle again, as well as like looking really sleek. It means that the sound is resonating through more of the guitar and yeah, really, really cool. Click the link in the description to go and check out all the specs and details. As you know, I'm not a specs person. I like to tell you how it feels and how I like it. <laughs> now let's have a listen to how this sounds. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Really, really liking the sounds of getting out of this bass. Don't have any desire to change anything about it. It's really full sounding, and I think the components on the body and the hardware and the way that it's constructed are really helping those pickups shine. You know me, I'm not much of a bridge pickup guy, but I think the bridge pickup sounds really good here. It sounds exactly what I want out of a PJ configuration, adding that brightness and clarity, and it suits all genres. One of the most versatile pickup configurations, and it is sounding at its best here. It sounds so good. Now, I compared this bass earlier to my Squire Classic Vibe P bass, so I thought it would be interesting to do a little comparison between the two. If you see my other videos, you'll know that the Squire has been upgraded just with some EMG Giza Butler pickups. So the price of that bass, they're normally about £320 plus the price of the pickups, is kind of similar to where we are with this Yamaha. So let's have a little sound comparison between the two. So personally, I think I prefer the Yamaha. It just sounds a bit more full and just punchy and girthy. And you know me, I like it girthy. Although it is a bit more pricey stock, you are getting a lot more premium features. So yeah, overall, I love this bass, honestly. I would really recommend it. Not just for the price range, it's really good. Genuinely, it's fantastic. I haven't been able to put it down and it just feels really great in the hands. Blah, 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 blah. As always, let me know in the comment section below what you think about this guitar, maybe what other basses you want to see on the channel, because I really want to keep you guys involved and curating what content you see on here. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.